This is the all-new DS9. The French try to retake the luxury market. Here, a luxury sedan, all-new. And they try to attack the Germans. Audi, BMW, Mercedes. Hmm, is this the French S-Class? Well, rather the French E-Class. We will find out and see what this vehicle is capable of. How premium is it actually? Here in the front we can see the DS logo. And you might remember the DS, the original one from 1950s, 1960s. That was a huge statement by the S at that time. The design here is also a statement. Grill here in the front reminds us a little bit of Audi, but they still have their distinctive styling. When you shut down the vehicle, it's really, really interesting to see how the individual lights turn is a really great show. Hmm, maybe they could take this show to the Moulin Rouge or something. Oh, and the turning indicators also look really fancy. And this is the performance line, by the way, so you already have a sportier look. I would say, you know, Grand Terroir, um, some taste of walnut and mm, spices, cinnamon. No, sorry, I just pretend to know something about wine. I rather know about cars, just want to know how this one tastes. <laughs> Although it's called DS9, it's not from outer space. Yeah, you know, DS9, Deep Space 9, but best greetings to all trackies out there. But today it's about the vehicle, the French luxury class, the new one, 19 inch wheels here, optional 20 inch wheels. You can see it right there. They're called Monaco, the style, so all with French influence, also the names, of course. DS Performance Line badge and it also has contrasting mirror caps right there. I left the hazard lights on so you can see the effect right there. And the length, by the way, is 4 meters 93 or 194 inches, so comparable length just like the Mercedes E Class. And they have an additional light right here that's very interesting. It doesn't flash, but just an additional. And look at that stretched roof line right there, so really beautifully done. Extraordinary styling. Also for the tail lamps with this crystalline structure on the inside. Once again, here a cascading style for the turning indicators. So I think design-wise, wow, this is really something and definitely more unique than some of the other cars out there, the competitors. Hmm, however, in the lower part there, <whistles> alert from the Autogefühl fake exhaust police, not 100% fake exhaust because it's still on the inside and it goes through, but the outer tip is definitely fake. What do you think about that? Beautiful River Rhine region in Germany. We are here today. They're producing a rather sweet white wine. And yeah, I'm afraid that French red line lovers wouldn't call that wine what they produce here. But of course, high quality nevertheless. Anyway, back to vehicles. Here, the DS9. Interesting, they use that so-called active scan suspension. Looks ahead to see what's happening on the road and then adapts the suspension according to it. And when you approach the vehicle, door handles fold out and also the side mirrors fold out. So that's a pretty cool effect. And when you close the vehicle, they go in again. You can also peep peep, also makes a peeping sound. Then here we go, you can also press it, comes out, or you can also then press it in again. So yeah, sometimes it looks a little bit weird, but overall what's cool is that when you touch it like this here, Really, you know, really resonates very well with the quality. So the door feels heavy, the handle feels heavy, and door closing sound is also awesome. So that's where they really have caught up to the German manufacturers. Maybe even better from the door closing sound. It's really awesome. Let's check door closing sound in the rear. And also the rear, the rear door also feels very heavy. So parfait. <laughs> yeah, another episode, Dato Gefühl. A little bit of French today and also in our episode. Then here, Alcantara use on the inside. This is the performance line. Mm, soft touch here, a little softer here. And also the performance line has more Alcantara on the seats. So I would also advise you to go for the performance line. It looks sportier and also gives you a better seating and climate comfort in the interior. Also with the sporty accentuations in the upper part. This is a really nice job. And this interior is clearly totally different from Audi, BMW and Mercedes. It's more, let's say, playful, definitely. So they use a lot of different elements. It's not calm at all. But this car wants to be unique. And really, I have to say, that works. Let's take a seat. 
and it's really interesting. I mean, the the seat itself is actually quite sporty and also quite comfortable, but the whole uh, console layout you saw on is rather a little bit cramped in, I have to say. So a huge middle console, it doesn't feel big on the interior. So it's a you know, reasonable sized car on the exterior, but here in the front, you can indeed also compare it to the seating feeling you have in the Peugeot 508 or so, which is a seg segment lower. So space-wise in the front, not abundance. However, we can put the seat in the lowest position and then with one with 86 or six with one, yeah, still leave some headroom. There's the panoramic roof. You can also open that one. You can also open that one. You can also open that one. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> there we go. So I had to turn on the, the engine for that actually. So there we go. This is the maximum opening for that. And also has an electric shade like this. And yeah, then we can also close it once again. Bienvenue dans l'intérieur. Welcome to the interior. And you have to hold the start-stop engine button a little bit longer. And here, the analog clock goes up. BRM. A pretty spectacular effect. We know it from the GS7 already, by the way. Performance line means sporty atmosphere. A lot of Alcantara use. It brings sportiness. At the same time, coziness in the interior. That's really cool. Once again, huge middle console. 12-inch screen right there soon deals to the screen. First of all, here the steering wheel has also, you know, like a sculptural form. You have shifting levers behind it. On the steering wheel, you can pick up the foam, for example, or on the left side, control the volume. Also with digital instruments, you can also change a little bit in the digital instruments. Right thumb is for the right instrument, left thumb for the left instrument. So you can also have, for example, some uh, map information in the middle part right there. Steering wheel also goes up and down and in and out like this, but doesn't feel that smooth when moving it, like a little bit of resistance here kind of inside. Well, to the middle part, what's interesting, this all touched them, but in the lower part, then you have some hotkeys, like, you know, for the climate unit, like there, but most of the stuff you do control and here inside screen that's of course not that cool while driving and the voice input is not sophisticated at all three fingers is a trick always to hit there we go <laughs> yeah <laughs> glad it worked <laughs> and then you get to a hidden main menu there's no other access to the main menu besides this trick and then you can also access the apple carplay here and it has an integration like this there's the 14 speaker focal sound system inside this very car then right here. And um, let's listen to that. And try to understand anything. Just listen to the sound. Hmm. That's cool. Wow. Really in-depth sound, so that's amazing. So happy with the sound system. Other than that, when you go to the GPS, you see it's not the most current system. It's not responsive at all. In this case, rather forget it, I would say. Now let's move on down further below like this. Driving mode selector is placed here. Why would they do that? Like, oh, I want to go to the sports mode. Like, uh, uh, here? Or it's like, you passenger, could you please activate the sports mode from here? And then, yes, of course, honey, I'll activate the sports mode. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what, what they thought about that. Then you open this console, you have two USB-A chargers for your phone, for the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto connection. Then here, if you have the plug-in hybrid, you can go to the B mode, more recuperation. And once again, great solution here for another cubby hole with the Alcantara top. You have cup holders and then also Mercedes alike, split armrest for more space. Rear view camera poor resolution and this is the drone view from above but you can see rear camera front camera no side camera for coast cutting reasons and then the middle part builds up but then the middle area is not a live image but an image from the past but being just you know collected so to speak at the price point this very vehicle including extra 60,000 euros I think we could expect more now it's time to get to the rear to play President Macron. Well, but there's no one to open the door for me. Where is James when we need them? By the way, funny story is I once was on a car event and I was getting into a car and someone was driving us and I said like, hey James, how are you? How are you? He's like, how do you know how do you know my name? <laughs> of course it was a joke, you know, just saying like James for a 
chauffeur because chauffeurs are being called James in movies. Uh, just a great coincidence that he was really called James. So then let's get inside. First look, really long door, long wheelbase. Nice Alcantara use for the performance line. Vraiment, une voiture extraordinaire. So, some French lesson for today as well. Usually I'm more that kind of a German lesson, you know. But, uh, yeah, more to that later. Then let's get inside. Wow, this is a lot of leg room. However, as for my feet, it's like in the Peugeot 508 indeed, or, um, you know, when you have the seat in lowest position, it's really close, so you have to tell the driver, hey, James. Is it James, actually, when it's a French vehicle? It's more like, you know, Julien, maybe? I don't know. Or maybe our French uh, viewers will tell us how are French chauffeurs usually called. Yeah, looking forward to the comments. So put the seat a little bit higher, then you can sit, you know, a little bit better right there, but definitely a lot of legroom. And headroom is close, but once again, does fit. And it's a very nice styling also in the rear with the Alcantara. Bench is a little bit short. I wouldn't say it's, it's S-class comfort. Is it E-class comfort? Mm. I don't know. Maybe it comes close and it's not exactly identical. Here, this is, oh, this is coming down a little bit fast. Then cup holders like this. And you can fold this one here up, but once again, yeah, this is, I think, not living up to the standards. It shall be. There's a ski hatch available here, so you can reach through. But the build quality of the materials and so on is actually quite decent. Two USB-A chargers here in the rear. So overall, feeling quite cozy and comfortable in here. Why not? En garde for the trunk area. 510 liters and let's check it out. The length is actually 45 inches or 114 centimeters. That's actually good and also the width is more than 40 inches, more than a meter. That's awesome. Just the height is limited at 18 inches or a little bit more than 40 centimeters. Yeah, if we compare it to a Mercedes E-Class, hmm, yeah, that's not too high in the trunk, but this is the plug-in hybrid model and they will offer most of the vehicles as plug-in hybrid. So when you compare an E-Class plug-in hybrid, then it becomes more, you know, a better or fair comparison. Uh, they installed here this tire repair kit to annoy me, obviously, because <laughs> you have to take it out first and then you can lift this one up. And here you have another storage for your charging cable and then the battery is below that. Or you can have another DS cable store box here. As for engines and power and so on, DS says, well, we don't even want to keep up with the Germans. That no, that's not our primary objective. We rather want to focus on comfort. However, as for the engine choices, 225 horsepower from a 1.6 liter turbo petrol engine, either pure petrol or with a plug-in hybrid, and also a 250 horsepower version of the plug-in hybrid, then with higher range. So you either get a 12 kilowatt hour battery or something a little bit more than 15 kilowatt hour for a little bit more electric range. And then there's also the 360 horsepower version, then not with one electric motor, but with two electric motors, one in the front, one in the rear, the most powerful version. Well, and to make the comparison also to the Germans a little bit fairer, we are driving the most powerful one today. See how that goes. Welcome to Thomas's French driving lounge for today. And it's really a unique feeling, definitely. I can already tell you so far. If you compare it to a Peugeot 508, you realize this one is just a longer vehicle. So it feels more sophisticated in a way, more subtle on the road. You feel the length definitely while driving, you know, while driving, I said. So, and steering, that's something, you know, with Citroën, DS, Peugeot and something, it doesn't give you like a direct feedback. It's very vague and loose. However, you can also switch to sports mode. Soon we'll check out how that one changes things. First of all, in a normal driving mode and we start in an electric way when we have some battery left, of course. When you switch to the sports mode, you get this electric boost. And in the electric boost, basically it's almost always available because they leave a little bit less, you know, the, like the least part of the percentages 
for this very short boost. Then in the sports mode, we get most power both from electric and from the combustion engine. And we start here 50 kilometers an hour and let's go. Whoa, that's 100. Hmm, but yeah, that shifting was a little bit... Yeah, did you see that? So a uh, little bit hesitating here while shifting. So that didn't feel too good, actually. Um, I mean, with 360 horsepower, this car has some serious performance. We see it with the cars behind it, so they are basically gone. But that didn't feel too sporty, actually, you know, and like just how the car behaved. This is a very, you know, one of the very first times we can actually drive with this vehicle. Let's see if this is changing, you know, over time. Um, even more interesting is when you are driving this from, from the get-go. Actually, this is more interesting because the electric boost will have more effect when you start it at zero. So, let's see, let this Citroen pass and let's check out this one, also in the sports mode. Let's go. That's 100. Wow. That was 0 to 60 miles an hour or 0 to 100 kilometers an hour. That was good now. That was good. So, yeah, maybe that situation there before was, you know, not to the liking of the vehicle. But here, from the get-go, good, ex you know, electric acceleration. At the same time, also proper shifting from the engine and also quite decent sound. So, that went very well. Really nice. So, yeah. That's how things can turn out in a live test. Here in the sports mode, I have a little bit more resistance from the steering wheel. However, still not the best unity of driver and car and so on. But the sportiness is not what this car is focusing on. It's really more this relaxed driving feeling and that is definitely given. There's another one. So uh, I have a very good driving impression actually. The suspension is also doing a good job. We have some uneven parts on the road here as well. and. Visibility is not too bad actually, but you kind of, as I said earlier in the Indian rod, kind of caged in. So I think the steering, the steering feel is the thing I like least with this vehicle. What I like best is this unique design, also the unique driving feeling, and also the comfort that the car is giving you, um, and the, the feeling just of having something special. It's really interesting that, by the way, in the French market, so their home market, Last year, this vehicle here, or the DS, the, you know, with this, this wasn't here yet, but the DS brand was the second most premium brand, second most sold, just behind Audi. Uh, this is actually uh, very interesting. So, especially in the French market, they are really appealing to a lot of customers who want to drive something from their homeland. Also in Italy and Spain, quite successful. In Germany, they really have a tough time because the German premium brands are not only present as for the marketing image and so on, but also with all their dealerships, a lot of market power and also with a good leasing rates in the fleet, um, in the business fleets and so on. So this is then of course really tough. So I mean, the difference to the 508, again, it feels somewhat similar because of the technology. They share the same technology and the steering feeling and so on. Just that this car is bigger and feels a little bit more subtle on the road while driving. If you now really compare it to Mercedes E-Class, BMW 5 Series and the Audi A6, well, they give you more space on, in the front. So this one feels a little bit more cramped in in the front. Comfort-wise, um, I would say the seats here in the DS are not optimized on tallest people. So the Germans have seat ergonomics, which also suit taller people more. If you're not as tall as me, that won't make such a difference then. Um, biggest difference is definitely the driving dynamics. I mean, the suspension is good, definitely. And you see here, it also doesn't shake up too much. So it's not that it's super soft or something. Overall, really happy with the suspension. The lack of driving dynamics rather comes from the steering feeling, I would say. And that is something you can fix easily, you know? That's very interesting. So. 
Neil DS or Peugeot or Citroën engineers, they could easily fine tune the steering feeling. So that's, I think, the biggest task for them. If that would be, you know, if that would be proper, the difference to the German manufacturers would be really, really, you know, way smaller than it actually is. So, but overall, I have to say, very good driving feeling, pretty relaxed, very luxurious. If you want to have something unique, this is definitely um, an alternative. So, how does it taste, the DS9? Can it challenge the Mercedes E-Class and the other competitors from Germany? Well, I mean, French wine is awesome, but that's not French wine. Just as water with water, you know, with some coloring inside. So, because due to Corona reasons, everything of the restaurants here were closed. So, <laughs> what about the car? Actually, in the front, really nice design. So, I think design-wise, really awesome really nailed it have something unique yes they can catch up with the german competitors with that as for the interior it's also really unique design so if you want to have something different that might be something for you infotainment wise and technology wise on the interior maybe not necessary and yes a mercedes e-class is still offering some more comfort for example as for the driving yes that's something where the germans are always top notch so the Germans drive more agile, this one rather focused on comfort, but they also have some interesting technologies like the night vision and also the active scan suspension, for example. So that's also pretty interesting. In the rear, it's also quite decent as well seating position, but not as luxurious as you might expect from a segment higher or something or from the S-Class. So definitely more comparable to Audi A6, Mercedes E-Class or than the BMW 5 Series, especially lengthwise. So once again, the biggest difference is rather that you don't have the driving agility like you have with the German competitors. And of course, most of the engines are rather low spec as for the horsepower, but you've seen we can also go for a high horsepower version, but you don't get this typical six cylinder feeling or something like one of the performance versions of the Germans or something. So power is possible. But then rather in just this, you know, this one version, but it's definitely not the focus of the vehicle. So it's a super unique and interesting vehicle. Definitely. I would like to know from you guys, what do you think about the DS9? Would you go for this one? Would you pick this one over the German vehicles? To me, driving agility is really important. And you might think, oh, that's obvious. The German would pick the German car. It's totally not about that. I would pick this one. Maybe if you think, oh, uh, there are 10 other Audis in my, uh, you know, in, in, in my neighborhood, I want to be more unique. If you want to have more driving fun, you would still stick with the German ones. So I would also still pick an E-Class because I think it's the overall better vehicle. But this one clearly is really appealing to me because it's so unique, especially then here in this very interesting performance line we have here today. So. Now tune in to another E-Class episode or to an Audi A6 or BMW 5 Series. So check out the other videos we have that we can even better compare these. So it has been very interesting day here with this DS9 wine tasting. <laughs>